<laughs> hey kids! You know, I thought we should change it up a little once in a while, so today I'm in, uh, I'm in um, Monster Toy Corner. Yeah, just so it doesn't look exactly the same every time to you poor viewers as we continue our 11,000 part series on the history of uh, monster design and cool Halloween masks. With me, that guy, a uh, great one for you today from uh, from a long time ago with the simple name of the simple name of Demon. Now a lot of masks have been called just simply Demon but this was an early one uh, from Don Post Studios. This particular mask cataloged as number I think 910 back in the day came along around 1976 and was first in production through 1980 with some variants in the paint I like the early ones which were uh, generally made in black latex and then uh, stipple painted or sponge painted so that you saw some black showing through in the cracks here and there. Kind of gave him a dirty and grungy look that I thought was cool. But uh, some of the later ones were more um, just airbrushed and didn't have that spongy stuff going on but always a great mask. Now uh, as I was saying he was in production originally from about 76 to about 1980. He showed up again briefly in 1987, but those were cast a little thinner and weren't quite as uh, deluxe as the uh, late 70s ones. And he tended to be really red. That version was a little simpler paint job, red and black. Mostly just red and black. I think he had some black on the lips as well, but uh, still look cool. Still a great, uh, great mask if you can find one. Uh, that was just in 87, the red ones, and then he showed up again as part of the Don Post retro line from uh, about 2001 through 2002, and that version looked just like the uh, late 70s ones. Unfortunately, they tended to be made out of um, inferior quality latex, and a lot of the ones in that retro series didn't hold up. Retro! A lot of those uh, melted away because they just weren't made of as good of uh, just pure latex like the early ones were. I first had this guy when he was new, which would have been, uh, I had my first one in 1976, I believe, and at the time I thought he was just the scariest thing in the whole world. I remember I had a, a haunted attraction, had a haunted house at the fairgrounds in the county uh, in which I lived. That would have been Crawford County, if anybody's keeping track. Crawford County Fairgrounds, I had a haunted house there in 1976. And yeah, I was a kid, still in school and all that. Had a 1976 haunted house, and I had this guy with a black light and a red light shining on him, and he was on a mannequin I had borrowed from some uh, clothing store, and he had a robe. And I remember for hands, at that time they were selling hands out of uh, the back of Famous Monsters magazine, which if you ordered uh, Hunchback slash Mr. Hyde hands, instead of getting the hands that were originally sculpted to go with the Hunchback and Mr. Hyde masks, at this time you would get a pair of kind of generic hands that they used for the Wolfman and the Timberwolf masks and a lot of other masks with, uh, with a flesh color paint job and brown uh, fingernails. And I had a pair of those that I put on that mannequin with him. I had two uh, pillars, one on either side of him, and one had a Don Post skull on it and the other one had a Don Post Vermilion skull on it. And at the time I thought that was just the scariest thing because he was such a scary guy. Now where did he come from? I'm glad you asked. He was actually sculpted by none other than Bill Malone, guardian of the universe and uh, director of great movies like the House on Haunted Hill remake and Parasomnia. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Malone sculpted this back in the 70s and it was based on an old painting from the 16th century and I had heard that that was supposedly it was based on some old uh, creepy painting for years and years but um, never actually saw the creepy painting in question until the publication of uh, the Lee Lambert book The Illustrated History of Don Post Studios and he's got in the book you can finally see the painting uh, on which this was based and it's a wild chaotic painting with lots of uh, uh, warriors and, and, and uh, like knights I guess you'd call them and demons and so forth and this is in there amongst the mess amid the chaos in the painting and it does indeed look just like this mask. This mask, mask looks just like that painting. So if you want to see the painting he was uh, 
inspired by, the painting that inspired this cool collectible mask, uh, you can find it in the Lee Lambert Illustrated History of Don Post Studios book. That's about all I have to say about the old demon. Um, I think I mentioned he was part of the 900 line, and you know, uh, even to this day, and I say that fully aware that this day is Monday, to this day I think some of the best designed monsters of the 70s and the best designed masks, uh, really of all time, were part of the 900 line from Don Post Studios. They just had so many great, great characters uh, in the mask uh, gallery back then. You'd, you'd never forget one when you, when you saw it. And well, this guy, uh, I've been looking at him for so many years now, he kind of looks like a, a relative. He looks like a member of the family. Don't ask which one.